Hey guys and welcome to Wakefield Tonight Elite episode number 30 and just like that 56 they're spluttering back into life this route is very much doing some spluttering and I thought it was about time that I came to do a video about the elephant in the room as people keep asking me what's going on with this route uh, quite rightly too because it's a year since I last did a video I think so I want to try and show you guys what I have been doing because there's been bits going on um, but in all honesty there hasn't been a lot going on and this video is going to take us for a drive around what's completed on the route in terms of the core of it and also explain what, what has been going on. Um, so we're here in Milford Yard. This is an all new bit of scenery. It wasn't actually covered in any, any episodes. I went through a bit of a patch last year where, to be honest, video wasn't sort of on my mind and I was a bit down sort of thing. And I just wanted to get on with some route building. And so what I did was I did create Milford Yard so I completed the section we did in episode 29 which was way over on the left hand side near Ferry Bridge we've, we've carried on another three miles or so to here at Milford Yard Milford's a place where I spent a lot of time as a kid growing up I really uh, loved seeing these 56ers coming out of here on the coal trains it was a constant procession you'd stand on the bridge down at Milford Junction and you'd literally have them every three or four minutes coming storming out of Gaswood which was around that corner um, and they come storming around there every few minutes. It was absolutely epic. Um, in terms of like what I've done, so I've done as far as the curve here. Uh, I will do a bit further. I'll go to the bridge on the corner. And we may even go to Gaswood, considering we have got a few bits for there that Tom had done for Avigat Loop. But it's all a bit of a mishmash of assets. We've got like these mills here that are recreating the uh, famous mills at Milford. They don't do a perfect job, but for me, they do it justice, which is the key thing. Uh, you got the little, I think this is a DV sign non point or something down here. So we've got this here, and then you've obviously got the lines to Sherburne and York on this side. Again, as I did with the uh, Wakefield to Nottingham part of the route, I've gone for the idea of having the fields filled with foliage, and I really do like the sort of effect that it gives FPS wise around 100. I'll leave the camera on so you guys can see what it's getting. Um, so yeah, FPS is around 100, so I'm really happy with that. The foliage, it took ages to sort of get the dynamic look that I like to get. And being Milford Yard and as a, as a place so close to my heart as a child, it, it really, I wanted to do a, a top-notch job on it. So it took quite a while to bring it to uh, fruition, but very proud of how it's actually looking. And hope you guys are liking how it looks too. I did create a little scene down here, um, which I liked, which was the... Uh, Railwayman talking to the farmer and then the tractor and everything. Um, and it'd be a nice little picture there sat waiting at the peg. So, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to take a drive on the route from here at Milford Yard. We're going to recreate what would have been one of the gas growing wood to Welbeck, which is at Normanton. Uh, coal turns, which you just take coal to Welbeck tip for uh, tipping and the spoil heaps. So, we're going to come out of Milford Yard, which is here. We're going to come down past Ferry Bridge up the climb to Pontefract, along the Wakefield to Nottingham line, we're going to go around the curve at Calder Bridge, Turner's Lane at Wakefield, then up through Normanton, past Jura Port, and we're going to go to Hunslet Yard in Leeds, which is where Tom has been doing his work on the route, and we'll take a look at that. When I say people have been doing their work on the route, by the way, not really much has happened for almost a year, so uh, I'm going to go into why that is and what the plan is going forward in a few minutes, but again, I spent a lot of time doing little details down here. I was really motivated when I did this, actually. Um, probably some of my better route building work in the last few years was actually in this area. Uh, I, it's actually rare that you see me go into this sort of detail these days. It's normally a Tom thing to see him go into detail away from the track. I, I quite often don't bother, but like I say, I was, I was really motivated. So, first things first, we need to get our loco prepared. We've done the startup, obviously. Uh, this is the Armstrong Powerhouse class 56 uh, sound enhancement pack, I can't remember which it was. One of the better packs actually that uh, has happened in my opinion. Even if it is now a bit dated, it's still, the sounds and everything on this pack are absolutely top notch. And uh, again, for me, they bring back a lot of memories. I'm gonna turn the game sound down a little bit though, because the idea of this video is to show the route rather than listen to the 56 fraction, although I might cheekily turn it up a bit when we get to the best bit. So we've got a load of 36 HAEs on this working. And um, we're going to take them, as I say, we're going to take them to Hunslet Yard. We're recreating what would have been a work into um, Welbeck at Normanton, but um, yeah. Signaling wise, so we've got the ground signal to come out of here. In a second, I'm going to set the route and we'll get signal 
mic 684 that will pull off for the Pontifract route so we'll get a P and I'll show you the different indications on that actually before I do depart so if I set the route to go out of here where's the points it's a free roam so I've got to set the points myself there they are I set the route down here we'll get a green and a P which indicates Pontifract and if I set the route to go across we should get a green and an N for Normanton. So Ben Milford Junction, Normanton line, Pontifact line. But we want the Pontifact line, so it's changed those back again, which I'm gonna do on there, just a simple click. And we got a green and a P. So let's get this grid on the move out of Milford Yard. Nope, I'm gonna turn the sound up a bit. So as our train does snake out of here, we'll have a little fly in this direction, sort of over the top of it. The signal box hopefully is a placeholder. I'm hoping we can get a custom one of that made at a later date, but uh, as of now it's a, a placeholder. So the limit coming out of here is meant to be 5 miles an hour, although I'll be honest, when I was here as a kid, I, I don't remember much farther than that. 5 mile an hour running going on. Seems to have caught one a bit faster than that, but... Um, I'm sure anybody else that's been to Milford will remember those days when they used to come absolutely storming out of there. Uh, they'd just nail it out of the yard and it was absolutely hellfire. Um, so again, on this side you've got the field with the uh, sort of foliage all added in to provide, again, what I feel is a, a quite a nice look there. Quite pleased with how it's looking. Um, and then you've got the junction itself here as we look from what was the area where I used to stand as a wee boy up here. Uh, a lot more overgrown these days than it was in the 90s when I used to come here, but uh, we used to sit here and even you could even get down the platform in those days and there was no trees or anything down there. You could actually get down without a fencing or anything. Uh, and we used to sit there and eat sandwiches and whatnot and just sit and watch them go flying past. Uh, you got these funky signals with all the uh, stencils on top. They can provide loads of different routes around Milford. You've got obviously the downsidings and everything as well, as well as the west sidings. So you got obviously lots of stencils for those. I think it's four, isn't it? Yeah, four, four stencil indications that you can get. And they used to do a lot of, uh, what they'd do is they'd come past the, the junction itself and they'd set back into there. So they'd come past from Church Fenton and if they wanted to access the sidings we've come out of, they obviously had to reverse. Similarly, if they wanted to go across and enter those sidings from this side, they'd have to reverse. So you get quite a lot of reversals going on here. So we're going to head off out of Milford in this direction. We're going to go towards Hillam Gates in a minute. Uh, I'm going to talk you through what's going on with the route once we've got past Hillam Gates, because this is all the new scenery that I've not sort of shown people. And obviously I want to kind of explain a bit about it. Whilst we get to Hillam Gates, though, let's enjoy some grid fresh.
So there we are, we're away from Milford now, we're on the run towards Burton Salmon. And uh, initially, obviously, we're going to pass through Helm Gates, which is a little crossing halfway between the two. Monk Fryston is actually the name of the village. It's Milford Junction, but the village itself is actually Monk Fryston. As we come around here, you obviously get that view as well of Featherbridge Power Station. Um, quite an iconic view, as it was. The view, is, as, of course, is set 2018, for those who may not have seen one of these episodes before. And if you haven't, where the hell have you been? Although I haven't done one for a year, so you might have subscribed it last year. Might, what the hell's this bloke on about 30 episodes? Anyway, this is Helm Gates. So a little crossing, got some lights on it and stuff, and then you got a uh, single crossing house over here, and it's still a bit of foliage chopping up there. Again, it's it's pretty basic scenery wise. Got all the fault fields for grass, but beyond that, it's just trees and a few bush lines really, uh, giving me the desired effect. There is a bit of a gap in scenery down here because I need a uh, bridge doing as a custom asset. It sort of skews across the track, and there's no way really to do it properly. But yeah, these are the views that I was really proud of uh, achieving uh, with the uh, foliage and everything. Very pleased with how they came out. So yeah, I wanted to make it feel full of life, but also not go over the top. Uh, again, the inspiration was taken from the uh, ATS uh, Kings Lynn route with the uh, foliage and everything uh, in the fields, uh, in a very similar style to that. So it's a style that I really like. I picked up from those uh, from that route. So we're going to go past Burton Salmon. Again, there's a little gap in scenery here. This is the only bit between here and Ferry Bridge, if I remember rightly, that actually needs finishing. Uh, and then a second after that, we'll go around a really sharp curve here at uh, Burton Salmon. It's where the uh, Normanton line goes off on the right. We curve off to the left and head down towards Brotherton and then into uh, towards Pontefract and past Ferry Bridge Power Station. So. Line speed here, 50 mile an hour on this curve, we're not even up to 45 yet. And there you go, there is the division between the two lines. Now I love the lean into this curve. I also like this location in real life, isn't that a shot here? Although people have been having a bit of bother with Farmer recently, for some reason, I'm not sure why, but he suddenly got off his eye horse after not having a problem for about 20 years. Yeah, I just dropped the brakes. I thought I dropped the brakes then. That is a permanent AWS ramp, I think. Oh, have we got a... Yeah, it is a permanent. Because the line speed goes down to 30 at Brotherton, so we'll be going down to a speed of zero. Anyway, if, uh, whilst that's busy emergency braking, I can show, show you a little bit around Burton Salmon. So, episode 29, we were doing the trees in there. Uh, since then, I did do a little bit up to here. So, this is Fairburn, Fairburn Tunnel. Now, the plan still is for Tom to do the section from here through Castleford, uh, I believe. Although, I might have just dropped that on Tom there, I can't remember. I've got a feeling he, he said he was going to do this bit. But you've got the cut in here, that's the uh, A1M that we've just gone under there. And then you've got Brother to Fairburn Tunnel here. And uh, the road goes over the top of there as well. And that's where the scenery boundary is. Now the next bit of scenery on the route would be in that direction, just beyond Castleford. So there's a gap from uh, about here. And there's a gap then to Whitwood, which is here. So it's about four miles of scenery maybe there missing. And that wasn't actually planned to be initially a part of version one, but it is now. So uh, that'll get done in due course. So we got over here again, we got the uh, line that we're on. There used to be a little cross in here, which is why the fence comes across, but they took it out a number of years ago. Uh, got a little foot crossing and uh, sort of a little farm holding thing going on here. 
Um, they have all sorts of stuff dumped in here. They just have some sort of a wooden hook thing as well. So, yeah, that's uh, quite cool. And we're going to go now into Brotherton Cutting. And what I need to do is obviously get the train moving because it's kind of dead at the minute because I uh, fouled up, which is my own fault. And signalling wise, how we're looking. We're set to go straight through as if we were going to Sheffield at the moment. Look, we need to go around Ferry Bridge and kill Goods Kerr. So. That's across there. And I, what I haven't checked, by the way, here is I haven't checked if I've got any other trains on the route. Bet we're going to encounter a train somewhere. Uh, maybe not. No, actually, this is a new scenario. Talking rubbish. So we've got single yellow here. And that should clear once we get down to Ferry Bridge North Junction. Uh, probably a limiting aspect on there, if I remember rightly. Unless there's a signal not working, in which case, uh, that's annoying. I think there is a, a limited aspect on the next signal, though. So we're now on to what was already essentially completed when episode 29 was shown uh, way back last year so that essentially there is a year's work uh, although it's not really because I did it all in the space of about a month um, in all transparency I haven't actually touched the route for oh for god's sake I haven't actually touched the route for about seven or eight months in terms of actually doing any work on it again once we've got around this little bit here I'll, I'll jibber on about why that is I've literally just spent the last sort of two minutes telling you about that yellow signal and then I missed the AWS for it. As smooth as ever on these, uh, on these videos, of course. Not like we've got a heavy train or anything, you know, it doesn't matter. Just carry on and it takes about 25 years to get up to speed. So this is the old A1 that we've got going over here. This was the original Great North Road replaced by the bypass, uh, the A1 motorway extension sort of between the M62 and the M1, uh, the M62 and the A1, sorry, Link Road. That was opened about 20 years ago, and it uh, basically meant the end of this being the actual A1. So down here, Brotherton Tunnel, a sharp little tunnel, uh, very short, just goes under literally a couple of buildings, and then you come out on the other side at Ferry Bridge. So you come out on the other side at Ferry Bridge, which is where the uh, River Air goes underneath. So there's a bit of a tile stutter there, as I've explained before in episode 29. FPS, this is the hardest hitting bit of the route, just because of like what's going on here. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff, and it also has to render in a lot of what's going on up here at the same time. So you do find the FPS will come down to, uh, without Streamlabs running, I would probably be up at around 50 FPS, but I'm down at 40 odd at the minute. Um, I can probably skim some of the scenery out if I need to at a later date but I really don't want to, uh, especially when it's still up at 60 FPS, generally speaking, so it's just uh, certain angles. So if you look that way, obviously it's down at 45. I don't start getting concerned about that till it's down to about 35, to be honest with you. So this is Ferry Bridge. Now, as I've explained before in episode 29, please watch that for more details, but we need to get a shed in here for Ferry Bridge, the old uh, National Power Depot, now a Wagon Repair Depot. And then we've got the Ferry Bridge Power Station. We've got a rudimentary way of sort of getting that going on here, but not really fully detailed yet. It's half done. Uh, not even half done, to be honest with you. But yeah, we're just about to cross the River Air. But again, I, I went probably a little bit over the top with some of the detail around here, but it is important to me that the route can get screenshots that look good. And this is one of those places, obviously, where you can do that. So I'm going to get in the cab so I don't miss any signals or anything. We can't see the signal yet, and I'm guessing it's going to be on red. Oh, it's on green. Uh, must have cleared from yellow then. Now, I haven't fully finalised, obviously, all the signalling and speed limits and stuff yet. Now, it is quite a climb along this section. And uh, we'll need all the power that this loco's got, actually, to get up to 
Pontefract Monk Hill. So we got the green and we got the feather. The feather to the right is telling us we're going on to the uh, Wakefield to Nottingham line. And we're going to head across towards Wakefield itself. If we had a left feather there, we'd be going towards um, Nottingham Lake Station or Doncaster via Askern. Uh, or Drax. Uh, stuff like that. Straight on would be towards Swinton and eventually Sheffield obviously as well. No, I'll be so it is 40 going across here. I was surprised about that. And then it's 15, obviously, once we get down to the actual curve for the for the uh, for the curve to uh, Munkill. And you notice there's a Vogue 25 limit in here, which I need to kill off at some point. All part of the testing process. But yeah, as I said before, we've got little scenes down here. These were all shown in episode 29. Got little scenes where you can get screenshots by the warehouses and stuff. So we're going to keep a little bit of power on here. We're on a 1 in 152 and that will go greatly because what we've got to do is we've got to climb from the level of this line down here up to the level of the line that goes over the top on that bridge. So obviously it's a, a bit of a test for... 56 so we've done some testing actually we loaded trains and 56 is in the in the rain on TS and it's quite a hellfire little slippery fresh up there that's very much power box I believe in there as well so we are now as you can already see actually the grading that we're going up there so one in one six five and it'll go up even more in a second you can see quite clearly as we get to there, just how much steeper it's going to get. 1 in 141, 1 in 128. And it goes way, way, way steeper, yeah. So that's 93, 83. So it's capped out there, 1 in 79. Which is a fair old climb that'll make this grid cough a bit. Obviously, normally there would have been empty trains that came around here. Generally speaking, there were actually empties that came around here. If empties came out of Ferry Bridge, uh, there would be going. If a train went to Ferry Bridge, sorry, it would come out empty, and it could go to obviously Street Out, uh, Charleston Corridor in this direction, Pen uh, Featherstone Acton Hall, Pontefract Prince of Wales, Woolley Corridor near Barnsley, various other corridors. You had around the lines of Stairfoot and stuff like that as well. Um, but generally speaking, trains were actually empty coming up here, so loaded ones were fairly un fairly uncommon. And these workings actually used to go via Castleford normally as well. Uh, they would go via Pontifact certainly occasionally, but not all the time. We're currently on literally on full power here, and we're just holding 10 mile an hour. So this is the M62 we're going to go under. And the A1 as well. So you got the A1 first, I think it is. Yeah, and then the M62 afterwards. So we're going to cross now and we're going to go on to what is the Wakefield to Nottingham line, the thing that the series was originally named after. The route, as I've said before, is, is named Wakefield to Nottingham in these YouTube videos, but the actual route name is the Railways of Yorkshire because it's obviously expanded way beyond Wakefield to Nottingham um, We've got around 40 odd miles of scenery complete, so naturally calling it Wakefield to Nottingham, which is about an 8 mile section of it, makes no sense. Uh, but I can't exactly change the uh, <laughs> can't exactly change the name of the uh, YouTube series halfway through. We may come back with a, uh, an updated series name at some point though. So we're going to cross now onto the correct side. Still on full power. We're, we're now on a one in 168, so we can actually ease off as we cross over this bit. And um, if you want to see this section in more detail, 
I would employ you to watch some of the older videos in this uh, series. We've got lots of videos that cover this section of the line. And uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy those if you want to learn more about all the stuff that went on bringing this section to fruition. It's 30 odd episodes worth of me gibbering on about what I did and why I made certain decisions and what I did with certain things and whatnot. As always, if you've got a question, then do fire it in the comments and I'll try and answer it as best I can. Um, whatever I can do with stuff like that. So in terms of where the hell have I been for a year and why, the, why hasn't the route progressed for a year? There's a few reasons. As I mentioned, mental health was one of them. I just didn't feel totally at home in the TS community anymore and indeed that's still kind of a thing. Uh, but I've sort of got back into doing some TS development a bit in the last few weeks. Um, many of you probably will know that me and Tom obviously we work for Just Trains and as you also know we're currently working on Trains in World as per the roadmaps and stuff like that and it's a totally different world working on Trains in World ironically um, it's, a, it's a, to a totally different thing it, for me it's enjoyable but it's quite stressful and sometimes the last thing I want to do is go and do TSC work now I've sort of balanced my life out a bit more where I can actually Mentally, I've found sort of time to get back into doing some TSC. Um, so I am actually progressing another project, which I'm going to talk about as the video continues. Um, so what it's meant, though, is that since we started doing our TSW work for the last year or so, I've not really done out in TSC. And it doesn't really affect this route in that, in that much of a sense, because there really isn't much not completed on our key section in terms of scenery. Uh, we've got a little stub down here that needs finishing and we got this bit here and that bit there outside of that there's a tiny bit of Notting Lane and a bit of Ferry Bridge other than that really we're almost ready for version 1 there's Leeds which is a bit of a, a fair, obviously a bit of work but Tom would probably be able to knock that out in a few weeks to be honest with you now, the reason I have not carried on doing any scenery is because for me at the moment there is really no point in me doing any more scenery. I've sort of maximised what I can do without doing pointless stuff. Um, there's a decal not loaded there, so it looks like there's grass on the track when there isn't. Uh, as we come through Pontefract Monkill. So, the thing we've got is that Callum, obviously, who makes the station assets such as Pontefract Monkill that we're just going through, he obviously works with me and Tom at JT as well, so we all work for JT. And he currently is engrossed in some pretty major work for TSW. And before that, he was engrossed in making Manchester Piccadilly for Hope Valley extension. So, being as I'm not, like, I, 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 my personal, I can't, I could never ask somebody to make me something free and, like, demand them to do it. So, I'm quite happy for Callum to just focus on his job and his day job. The last thing Callum wants to be doing is me wittering on him, like, where's Pontefract Tanshelf? Where's Featherstone? Where's Street House? You know, the custom stations that we need. Um, so what I've said to Callum is obviously, look, focus on what we're doing at the moment when we work. Because I know exactly how hard it is. He's doing a, an awful lot of stuff that he's got going on. It's new to him. And it's also probably the key thing for the entire TSW project that he's working on at the minute. These walls at the moment, you will see, are actually lofts that I've built for Callum around Pontefract Tanshelf. So what this means is that Callum's not currently making the custom assets. He's got Pontifact Tanshelf sort of half complete, and it will come eventually. But essentially the route is sort of on a little bit of a hiatus at the minute. Um, I'm not pressuring Callum to do anything on it. I don't want to put any more stress onto him than what there is. At the end of the day, this is a free project. Neither of us is going to make any money out of it. The only money that will be made out of it is this video might make a quid in adverts. Um, obviously that doesn't <laughs> it doesn't exactly do it, it might buy me a tin of pop if I'm lucky um, it don't really do out in terms of filling a gap there so we're not going to be asking anybody for any money for this route and I'm not going to be able to give Callum any money to build this stuff because uh, I'm not exactly a rich person so essentially what's going to happen is until Callum has finished the major stuff that he's doing we've agreed that once he's finished the major stuff that he's doing which should be in the next hopefully a few weeks or so he will be able to go back on to doing Pontefract Tanshelf and some of the other stations and we'll look to start getting this route towards completion. Now in terms of what we've got left to complete there is still a fair bit in terms of custom assets. So we got the Escape at Castleford that's the big 
uh, place that's got a ski slope in South. Why is the two VP trees there? Bad man. Um, obviously, we've got the egg scape that's got the ski slope inside and everything. That's a huge building, and that needs to go in because it's right next to the track at Glass Out. Um, so other assets wise, there's not that many. There's Wakefield Viaduct, and there uh, are uh, the Bridget Burton Salmon that you saw. There's Nottingley Depot. Probably around five or so main assets that need making. Beyond that, we have the stations, which are the key. The reason I haven't uploaded this as like a beta or something like that, because I could upload a beta, and it's as you've seen, it's, it's fairly complete. Um, the reason I'm not is because it's missing the key components, the stations. It's missing, for instance, if you want to drive from Wakefield to Nottingley, well, it's missing the stations. It's missing Pontefract, uh, Tanshelf, Featherstone, Street House. Uh, these stations in real life are literally impossible to do with TS assets to a standard that I would be happy with. I have tried to bodge them and it didn't look good, uh, so I just deleted them. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not going to release a beta version of it without the stations and it's as simple as that really. So whilst we have got lots of scenery sort of complete, as you can see, there are actually bits of it that need updates, I reckon around here could do with an update. It's about five years old from this scenery now. Um, yeah, whilst we've got a lot of scenery complete, around 40 odd miles of it, the key bits are the bits of the stations and they're missing. So, until we've got those done, there'll be no version of the route coming out. And uh, I do hope that we can get it done reasonably quickly, but I'm not going to start putting time stamps on it or time frames because. What I did in the last video essentially is I did put a timestamp on it and it obviously it's come back to shoot me in the face because we've got nowhere near that. So in terms of the gaps in the scenery, obviously this is a gap where Featherstone Station should be. And there's quite a bit needed to do in probably a week's worth of work. I could knock out this out in a week or so to finish it. So that's what needs doing there. And then there's another similar gap at Street House. But yeah, it's 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 not far from completion, but at the same time, it's quite a long way from completion. We still need Glass House and Station as well, and Castleford to be made. And then that will pretty much complete what we need for version 1. The plan at the moment with version 1 is Leeds to Wakefield Kirkgate, round to Nottingley, up to Castleford as well, uh, so you can do the, uh, Wakefield, the Leeds to Sheffield trains. Um, round to Castleford and then down to Kirkgate. You can also do the Leeds to Nottingley via Castleford and Kirkgate and whatnot. And generally do a fair bit of stuff. Version 1 essentially will be a beta in theory because it won't have a fully completed network. What we, go, what we do beyond version 1 I don't know. I mean version 1 will include Milford as well. We want to get V1 out there so people have got something to play with. Again it'll be about 30 or 40 odd miles of scenery. Uh, we've got 40 miles done but I reckon 8 miles of that could be outside the room in terms of version 1 when I cut the tiles off uh, because there'd be no point in it being in. After that we'll see what we want to do. Obviously DTG released their Leeds to Manchester route. Now this was originally Leeds to Manchester as I'm sure many of you will remember. And essentially the goal was still to do Leeds to Manchester. I feel we can do a better job than the DTG route and uh, that's what we would be aiming to do but I think that the good thing that DCG view actually does is it gives us that opportunity to use their route for assets because the stations and stuff obviously would take us forever and a day. So essentially it'll be our own little sort of enhancement pack of the DTG view if that makes sense. Uh, but it'll all be self-contained on this route when it does eventually get completed. Because Callum has actually done a hell of a lot on the Manchester side of Stanage. And uh, there's not that much need to do in Connect at all. So that's still the end goal. And uh, it's still, I'm still committed to finishing this route one day. You know, it, on and off, various geysers. I have actually been working now on Wakefield to Nottingham since about 2008. Uh, all the other previous geysers, they have only lasted about eight months each. So this one's managed to last uh, a good five years in production. So it will get finished. It's not vaporware. It just might be vaporware until it gets finished, which could be a while. Um, I'd be very happy if it was done this year, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's not done this year, is what I will say. Um, 
you know, at this point, I don't think it will be done this year. Um, but yeah, in terms of uh, how it's looking and everything, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how it's going. You'll see what Tom's been doing as well soon down the uh, leads end of the route. Just going to check a few bits of point work because obviously we are going to need to make sure that we're routed correctly at Wakefield. So we're coming past Openshaw Junction there. Um, set that one. And we need to cross and go over Turner's Lane Curve, which is where this is. At Calderby Junction, we need to cross Turner's Lane Curve at Wakefield. That avoids uh, Kirkgate Station. Then cross over and head up towards Normanton. Well, so that's where we would. That's where this train would have been booked to go. Obviously, Goose Hill Spiral Terminal. We're not going to go in there today because I want to show you guys what Tom's been doing at Leeds and Huntsley area. I know we did stream it quite a few times, but there may be some people here that didn't see the streams. So you might want to see the work that he did put into Huntsley, which was quite uh, quite significant. Now we're speeding a bit here. The limit is 55. We're now downhill. One in six four seven. We've been coming down a one in one fifty. They'll be fine to that. That's Crofton Depot on the right. I've just whacked the microphone, so sorry about that. So yeah, that's Crofton Depot. We've just gone past on the right there. And we're coming past the Redbeck Hotel and the, the petrol station. The limit says 60, but it's not. The limit is 50. I need to fix that. So the limit's 50 down here. Then it goes to 20 miles an hour at the bottom end of Oakenshaw Cutting. So we're coming down 1 in 112. It's quite a steep sort of drop into Wakefield itself. And it takes quite a while to sort of navigate your way around. Because uh, as a photographer, you can actually photo trains way back at Sepontia Factor, even Featherstone. And you can actually beat the train by car then to Normanton and get it again. I've done that quite a few times over the years. In fact, you can even beat them sometimes from Normanton to this footbridge here at Oakenshaw. Which is a distance of about two miles. But you can actually beat the train because it's so slow going around the curves and that. Give the boys on the bridge a bit of an ill, an ill clean more about that. So we've got double yellow. We're going to get a double yellow here. And then we'll get the single yellow to cross over at um, Calder Bridge. Obviously, you have to be quite keen on the brakes down here. We're down in step four now. And we're still not really losing enough speed. So the tile stutter here is loading in literally Wakefield. Wakefield obviously curves around on itself. So the whole thing loads in because it's curving back on itself and towards you. So it's quite an intense set of tiles here. So there is quite a bit of work still needs to do here on this curve at Agbrig. It, it takes, I, I ain't got the motivation, same here. I just ain't got the motivation to do that right now. It will get done because obviously it needs to get done. But I want to be able to do it to a similar level of quality as what you've seen at Milford um, and not rush it. You know, I have to be motivated to do this stuff because otherwise I make a bad job of it. You know, same with this sort of area. I have to be motivated to do this. The little scenes and stuff down the back alleys and and whatnot. In terms of what I'm sort of doing at the moment, because obviously I said I'm working on TSC, uh, I'm actually helping out Sean Gregory at the moment, uh, SG Simulations, you may know him as. Uh, he's doing a complete rework of the original Kuju York to Newcastle line. He's, he's taking it completely to pieces and we're going to start a YouTube series on that route. Um, he's completely relayed the track from York to Newcastle and everything and a lot of the scenery has been reworked or revamped or redone in some places. He's then gone on to add a hell of a lot around Newcastle, you know, all the lines that took coal and various other things he's, uh, he's added onto it to make it into a essentially a completely new project of its own and the stuff around Newcastle as you'll see when I do show it is absolutely epic he's done such a good job 
that's set in the sort of early BR era, so in, in the early BR blue era, so like mid 70s, early 80s sort of time. So it's perfect for like your AP 37 pack volume 2, we've found. It's really good for those, um, as well as some of the other packs. But the, the AP 37 pack volume 2, I found a lot of mileage out of the older 37s in that pack. You know, they have blue, blue variants and stuff. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that can be done on it, scenario potential wise and, and stuff. So, really looking forward to showing you guys that. Now, my, my role on that is, for anybody that may know, the Leam side line. Sean's added that onto the route, which runs from Pellor on the line to Sunderland from Newcastle. He's added the lame side line, which used to go from there, and it used to link into the East Coast main line at Ferry Hill, north of Darlington. So I'm going to be doing the scenery on there. It's a distance of about 16, 17 miles. I've got about two miles of it nearly done already. And my plan is to start doing a YouTube series, building that and showing you what goes into building a backdated route, you know, an old route. Um, the research material that we're using and stuff like that sort of how we go around well the lines are not there anymore how do we get around that how do we work out what buildings were there and stuff because it takes a lot more research and effort than um, building a modern route such as this for instance with the area that I've been building at the moment on the lean side line I've actually had to go and visit a local village website and stuff at Bowburn near uh, Ferry Hill and work out what a factory was and it actually turned out to be an asbestos factory back in the day and you know it's quite interesting to learn about these things and sort of get on with doing that detail a bit of VP grass on the left there still needs to die that will happen in due course my voice is going because I don't talk ever <clears throat> we've got about eight or nine miles still to show here so let's not spare the horses let's get on with it so we've come around there on the Turner's Lane Curve. We're joining onto the line at Wakefield. And you've got Kirkgate Station up here. And all the work that was done there. Version 1 I'll actually include here when I was thinking about it. It won't complete. I won't just end here at uh, Wakefield. That'd be a bit pointless and stupid. It will continue to Hillary Mills. I'd love it to continue to Huddersfield, but at this stage, gotta be realistic. There's little gaps here that need filling in. There's not enough detail here for my liking. So yeah, there's little bits need doing still, but we'll, we'll get on with it and we'll crack on and we'll get it done eventually. Again, once we have a um, petition where we're able to get the stations moving on, then I will come back and I can rapidly progress this because I will know that we're close to completion. One of the things I don't want to do is be like showing Callum that it's all done, we're waiting for him, it's not the case at all. And... Um, it's a case of we're all busy earning a living just like everybody else I have to go to work I'm going to work might be sitting in the same place I'm doing this video obviously but it's, um, sometimes doing your freeware developments in TSC can still feel like you're working and I'm not sure there's that many people that if they finished a shift at work you would say to them right do you want to go back to work then and do it for another six hours for free I'm pretty sure most of you would answer would uh, yeah, your answer would be no. So that's sort of the thing that we all collectively battle with as payware developers. And, you know, we do it 38 hours a week. Sometimes I just want to chill. And I've done that for the last sort of year or so, recharged the batteries. And now in my spare time, I'm happy to do a bit more TSC like I used to do. We're now working our way up the gradient the gradient it's one in one it's one in 337 map for Christ's sake it's not exactly a gradient is it I could crawl up this on my hands and knees um, so we're now on our way up towards Normanton this train would have in reality ended at Welbeck Spoil Terminal which is what we're going to come up to in a minute Ref Welbeck Refuge Point and uh, we'll be coming up to that shortly that's what this uh, on this signal here you've got a On this signal here, you've got a little um, call on signal that there would light if we were going into Welbeck tip, and that is where this working would have gone. From here, it would have just carried on then. Once it's unloaded, it would have just continued through Castle for straight back to Milford, a journey of about 10 minutes. And what they did normally, they did normally come through Castleford Way and then they would run round here. But uh, 
sometimes they did do this diversion through Pontifact, and if, indeed I've seen a path where they, they were pathed for this, so. Obviously now we're here, uh, through, this is all shown as disused. There's no intention to actually do scenarios using this. Uh, although, I may make it unovergrown enough so that you could in theory do a scenario in there. I think there's some trees on the track around the corner. Obviously if it's just grass then it's not such an issue. I feel like there's trees and fences and all sorts on the track down there. Yeah. So I may rip some of those out just so that you can go in there a little bit easier. Because I'm sure myself included might want to do scenarios in there if nobody else does at some point. So passing what was the site of Goose Hill Junction, you could have gone down from here towards Sheffield via Cuddeth and uh, down to Waffrow Junction, Swinton. That's where I used to come in on the right there. And we're going through the cutting and through Normanton Station, one of the... This was one of the last station models that got completed for the new, actually. Um, and uh, quite a good one it is as well. Normanton, of course, one stoner's crew of the north and was a very important place. The Thames Clyde, I think it was. Well, it might not be the Thames Clyde, but there was a, a dining train that went to Scotland from St Pancras anyway that used to stop, and those buildings on the right on the wall, they used to get off and have the dinner in Midland Railway days in there. There used to be buildings in the middle platform here and everything. There was yards to the left. There was a loco shed just beyond, which shut in 1968, 67. There was a hell of a lot going on at Normanton back in the day. These days, there's not as much going on. Well, there's nothing going on. But with the width of the formation, you can sort of see memories of old. Telegraph posts are about the only thing that remain of those days. But you can see how the line slews here. That's basically where the the slow line goes back onto the fast line, what would have been, because obviously in the, in the steam days, it was a, a four track, well, in some sections, probably about 10 tracks because there was a loco shed and everything on there. So we're now going to pass the bottom end of Wakefield Europort. If we wanted to go back to Milford and Castleford, where we started, we'd just turn right here and we'd head off then in that direction. Obviously we're carrying straight on towards Leeds, but uh, if you wanted to go into Europort, you'd go and take this second junction. There's the M62 again. You, if you're going in Europort, you'd take that second connection and you'd go in there. That'll be pretty useless in this route because we don't have a line to Doncaster and really you can only drive these for about 10 minutes. Um, if we extend to Doncaster at some point, then obviously you'll be able to do that, but that's probably about 30 years in the future and I might not be here anymore, so... <laughs> pretty morbid thing to say, but yeah. Train sim will probably have driven me to the dirt by that point. I might be trained to myself or been driven into the dirt by that point. But yeah, it's probably a long time in the future we might get to Doncaster. Went over the air called navigation. And uh, you sort of go over all the same things again. Went over the river at Pontefract, which is just over there. Maybe which is there, you can see it. So there's the river air going in that direction. We're just at the point where that spawns in actually. So this is the curve at Mefle. Mefle Junction, Triangle Junction obviously with Whitwood and uh, Altofts. Mefle will be coming around the curve here, then heading up towards Woodlesford. Obviously I should be doing 45 on this working. It just dawned on me after about <laughs> after about 55 minutes of driving, it just dawned on me that I should be, I should be doing 55. But we'll uh, 45, but we'll not worry about that. We ain't got time to drive at 45 mile an hour. Just pretend that there's not HAAs behind us. 
Was it H uh, HMAs that can go 60 loaded? I'm sure one of them was. Up I'm sure there was a, a model or wagon that they updated to actually go 60 whilst loaded. But most MGRs and stuff would have gone 45 when loaded, 60 when empty. So we're on the lawn straight now to Woodlesford. We need to set a few more points whilst we're going on here. Because we want to make sure that we go in the right part at uh, Hunslet. We want to go in the main sidings. And to access those, I believe we come off the main at Sturton. I, mean, I might be wrong here, but I believe we come off the main at Sturton. And then go in here. So Woodlesford was actually pretty much the first part of the route that I did randomly in the middle of nowhere. That was about five years ago now. The time flies. Uh, it really does fly. I mean, I'm sure the same for many of you watching, but it's 16 years ago since we all got into the Simulator as it was back in the day. And for me personally, it's now, I've been at JT for 12 years this year. Um... Where the hell does time go? Now, the last time I did one of these episodes, I think I was moving house. I've been in the damn house a year now. Where the hell have I been for a year? Yep, this is Woodlesford Station. I might update something here at some point. Uh, it was one of the first bits done, although I don't think it looks bad, really, to be honest for you, with you. FPS still nicely above 100. It has been for most of the run. I would say average across the route is probably around 60 to 70 if you add in all the bits where it's a bit more demanding, but you shouldn't see any issues at all on the bulk of the route with FPS, unless you're on a potato. It's um, running very nicely, 130. It does, does have a bit of stutter when you're loading some of the big tiles, but generally speaking, it's uh, performing very nicely. So this is coming towards Sturton. Uh, the signalling will sort of die off in a minute, actually. I think we might be about to pass the last signal. And that all needs to be obviously done at a later date. There's uh, speeds and everything that needs to be done down there as well. So there's a lot of stuff needs doing in that um, department. Well, as I'm sure you'll have seen on this run, I've, I'm going to see how many miles it is when we actually end uh, and go back to the menu. I'm sure you'll have seen that there is a fair bit done. It's just a case of getting it released and finished. And also, the criticism that I would have of it, and I have of it, is that there's nothing sort of connected up yet. That's why version 1 will essentially be beta, because we need to connect up routes. You can't do leads to not in a to leads via Wait for Westgate, for instance. That's going to have to be version 2 because Wait for Westgate is going to be a lot, lot, lot of work. And I want to get something out before that's done. Um, it might even end up in version 3. Let's see. The idea with version 1 is to give people a fairly big route and see what people can come up with. Come up with because there'll be a lot of scenarios that you can do on it that are 30 minutes, 25 minutes. There'll be the odd one that you can do around an hour, but most of them, you know, 30, 35 minutes. In version one but I'm really looking forward to seeing what people do now what we're coming on to around here is a hybrid of uh, people's work actually part of it's what I did around here and then you've also got a lot that Tom did Tom's actually been doing quite a bit down here uh, when he started helping out whether it was I said last year he was gonna help out and he has he's done a fair bit that post has been made. Um, but yeah, we've got like, this bridge obviously to be done as a custom asset because it is such a sort of unique bridge. And then we're going to come down here past certain uh, freight line terminal which Tom was working on. And he did all these in streams uh, sort of about a year ago, or less than a year ago actually. 
He was doing all this in streams and stuff and uh, showing everybody what was going on. It's the first time really I've taken a proper look at it. But yeah, you got Sturt and Stone Terminal over on the right hand side. And we'll make our arrival into Hunslet Sidings. So this is Sturt and Freightliner Terminal. Again, without leads. You can do diverted ones. There has been very occasionally, 2010 I think it was, one, one or two weekends. The freight line has got diverted to Notting Lane and then to Doncaster uh, from here. But yeah, you need Doncaster really to do a proper job of it, like lead to Doncaster line. Um, this is coming in then to Hunslet Cutting. Hunslet Yard leads Midland Road Depot. And uh, he's actually got scenery through to Holbeck, but we're not going to go down there because he's not fully finished. And I don't even think, to be honest, I don't even think I have an updated version of the route. I think he's done a bit more since this, but. Yeah, you got Hunslet sidings down here. And uh, personally, very pleased with how he's done with this. He's done a, a great job. It's looking good. Midland Road Depot, which he's achieved quite well, with, to be fair, without any sort of custom buildings. People that know our roots know that we love custom stuff and we go obsessive about it. The reality with this one is that we're not going to get anywhere near as many custom assets as we would normally have. So, He also did the connection to the Middleton Railway. Which goes up there. He hasn't done the Middleton Railway, but he's done the connection to it. Because there's no point in doing that. If you're going to do the Middleton Railway, you'd do it as a standalone route. You wouldn't do it as a connection to this. You'd just be wasting resources. There's the train. I want to make sure I stop it. Start putting some brakes on. Right. So you got the maze of roads, I know this took him ages, I saw the M621 and everything that goes into Leeds. The line coming under, an old stop board in the bushes. And just generally, the sort of detail that Tom's gone to in the cutting. He hasn't done anything yet outside the cutting on my version, whether he has it yeah, in his version, I don't know. But he's sort of marked out Leeds with lofts and everything, we've got the station there. And you can see just how close to Leeds he actually is, that wouldn't take him. In the grand scheme of things, that long. I know Tom what he's like. When he's when he grits down to something, he'd get that done in a few weeks, I'm sure. Um But yeah, we've done a full run from Nottingham there. We've seen him ninety five percent of the way. I would say it is. Um It's just the stations and stuff, as I explained to you. And I wanted to do this update for you guys just to explain what's going on. Because there is an elephant in the room and you haven't had the explanation that you deserve as to why it's sort of disappeared after I said it was going to be done about seven months ago. Um, so yeah, well, we are going to carry on working on it. We're not working on it right now. There's going to be another YouTube series for stuff I can work on at the moment. That'll be the Leem Sideline. And I hope you are going to join us on that series. It'll be another route building series the same as this one. And the two will eventually interchange. Uh, because I'm hoping that we can get back cracking with this in, in over the summer at some point. I want to see if we can get back on wait for to not only progress in it obviously tom's focus at the minute is cumbering coast and uh, i'm gonna have to steal him back from that but cheers as always for watching guys please do remember if you haven't already drop us a subscription turn on notifications hit that like button any questions drop us a comment i'll just drop us a comment anyway so it's nice to hear from you guys cheers as always for watching guys see you later bye